Welcome to the Rock is George podcast. I'm your host, George Dion, and this is episode 102. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to hit the subscribe button, whether you're listening on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or one of the many podcasting platforms that we appear on. Also, check us out at the loudest.com on the planet, knac.com. My guest for this episode is vocalist Ronnie Romero. He's quite the busy and in demand vocalist. He first came to prominence when he was chosen to front Richie Blackmore's Rainbow in 2015 2016. He was already in a band, Lords of Black, at the time, but I think the opportunity he had with Rainbow kind of made his name a little more known and opened up a lot more doors. He's been a member of many different projects throughout the years, from Vandenberg to The Ferryman to Sunstorm to The Michael Schenker Group. He's guest appeared on several Frontiers releases and probably others that even I'm not aware of. He has a new covers album out. It's called Raised on Heavy Radio. It drops January 27th on Frontiers. It's kind of a sequel to a covers album he released last year called Raised on Radio. He's going to get into the details on how the two are different and why he chose a covers album before doing a proper original music solo album. So here's Ronnie Romero himself to tell you all about it. If I knew absolutely nothing about Ronnie Romero, how would you describe your music to me? Well, my music is a a mix of many, many, many musicians that I've been listening for the last probably 35 years since I was born. I was born in a family of musicians. And uh, my father was a huge fan of rock, classic rock music, American bands, uh, uh, British uh, rock bands. So it's a, if you put uh, from 10 years after till Steve Ray Vaughan, uh, Frank Marino, going through the purple, uh, Led Zeppelin, Queen, Pink Floyd, all together in a mix. Maybe you can have an idea of uh, about Ronnie Romero's music. Your latest release, Raised on Heavy Radio, comes out on January 27th through Frontiers Music. Last year, you released Raised on Radio. Yeah. Uh, was it always the intention to do two cover albums back-to-back? The idea was on the table, but um, we never thought I would we ended up, you know, we would ended up doing it, right? Um, uh, we did the first, uh, the first one uh, just to test and to try to figure it out if the people would like uh, this kind of a, you know, releases. You know, normally the people, it's funny how everybody uh, can make covers, but then when a professional musicians go to go covers, nobody likes it. <laughs> it's like a, unforbidden. Like you, you, can, you can't do it. Um, it's a waste of time and or why not release original material instead, blah, blah, whatever. Um, but I really wanted to do it. You know, it's a, a, it's a kind of, a, um, I, I really want to honor all this music that I've been listening since I was a kid. And, and for me, that was the perfect uh, way to do it. And then suddenly, you know, um, suddenly and likely uh, and surprisingly, the people really like it, you know? <laughs> uh, so we said, okay, so let's make a second part. Why not? One of the great things about the two albums, I think, is that with the first one, it was more AOR related uh, tribute uh, covers. And this one is heavier. And that's kind of the two sides of Ronnie Romero. Yeah, absolutely. Um, And there was at the beginning, there was no uh, there was no intention, but it ended up happening that way. And it was was really cool, you know, because at the beginning, uh, when we talked about the first album, I was like, uh, okay, we're going to do songs that uh, the people, they wouldn't imagine uh, that I can, you know, I can, I can cover. Obviously, all the people relate to me with Rainbow and Dio and, and lately with Michael Schenker and many others. But nobody thought that I, I like, for example, Kansas, especially that era of Kansas or, uh, you know, uh, uh, Boston or that kind of bands and so it, it was at the end when we got we got the track list for the first record. I was like, oh, okay, um, this is kind of a very like a hard rock AOR thing, you yeah. know. Um, but it was not an, it was not on purpose, and it was great uh, because it brings me really out of uh, the comfort zone and then really out of uh, what the people would expect from me, and 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 that's why we 
decide on the second one to do to do it more more heavy. I have to say you have some curveballs in this album as well. Metal Days by Man of War, I didn't expect. And I certainly didn't expect the shining from the yeah. Ian Dillon era of Black Sabbath. Fantastic, yeah. fantastic album. Yeah, I mean, uh, that was the that was the main idea from from the beginning to do covers that uh, unexpected covers, you know, like the people, that, as I told you before, uh, probably everybody was expecting some Rainbow thing or Dio. Uh, that's why on the first album we did not Dio, proper Dio, but Elf from his ber- first band before Rainbow. And on the second one, uh, I mean, it's a heavy rock uh, album. You need, I couldn't escape from Rainbow anyway, but <laughs> but we went to another cuts that, uh, in my opinion, deserve deserve uh, to be more deserve more more attention. Like this era from Black Sabbath from, with Tony Martin and this wonderful album Eternal Idol, and, and so the others. And a song by Master Plan. I mean, it, over here in the U.S., Master Plan not that well known unless you're a diehard. Uh, hard yeah. rock fan and a European metal fan. And uh, you even brought in uh, Roland Grappau to appear on the track. So that was pretty cool. Oh, that, that was fantastic. I mean, uh, I, I really appreciate what Roland did. You know, he's a, he's a, he's a friend of mine. Um, he's, he, he's been the producer uh, of Lords of Black, my band, uh, since the first album, uh, probably 10 years ago, since 30, 10 years ago. So when I asked him, because Masterplan is one of my favorite bands, and that, especially that first album, is one of my favorites of all times. And 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 when I thought to do this one, and I talked to Roland and say, uh, "Would you opt to do a solo on this song?" And it was like, a, "Send me the song." And so I sent him the track, and it was like, a, "I'm not gonna do the solo. I'm gonna do all the guitars because I like the version." So <laughs> he ended up playing all the guitars, and it was fantastic. I saw that you covered uh, You Don't Remember, uh, I'll Never Forget by uh, Rising Force and Mom's Team's Rising yeah. Force. And I was a little surprised you didn't have Jeff Scott Soto on there because I feel like he has an office at Frontiers. <laughs> yeah. No, but, uh, you know, this particularly this one is is very related when I was I was in high school. And, and I remember I remember I need to travel uh, every day, very early in the morning, waking up, taking the bus to the high school. So I had like a two hours trip and I was obviously listening to music and, and that album, especially the rising force. And then also the fire and ice from in Wumstein, they were, you know, every day burning my ears. So it's uh, obviously, you know, I needed to do it. <laughs> I thought one of the bigger chances that you took was the four horsemen by Metallica because Metallica's fans were uh, really consider the music sacred though. Metallica put out a big covers album with a lot of different pop people covering their stuff. So I guess, I guess it flies. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, uh, I, I, I must say that, uh, it's not one of my favorite bands. Uh, but obviously if you want to make a cover album with heavy songs, Metallica must be there, you know, because they're part of the heavy metal and the, and the rock history. So, so uh, that's why we did it. And, uh, I think from the first album, this song is from the first album. It's like uh, something like, a, uh, again, nobody will cover, you know. We were talking about it with the band and everybody said, ah, yeah, nothing else matters or Master of Puppets or whatever it is. And I was like, we're going to do this one because nobody w- wanna, gonna expect me to cover this one. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, the model on the cover of this album is also your wife, Karina yeah, Minda. Wife. Yeah, it is my wife. She also sings backup vocals on three of yeah, them. That was interesting because, uh, you know, uh, um, we normally at home, we're traveling with a guitar and sometimes we play, you know, I, I play something and she she can sing. And, uh, and but she said that, uh, I, I don't know how to sing. And I, I always was like, a, you really have a good voice, you know, and, and maybe I can teach you some you know, tips and, 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 and you can sing better. And so we were trying to, to, I was trying to give her some vocal lessons and then suddenly I was recording the album. So to give her confidence on, on her vocals, I say, okay, you're going to the studio to record some backing vocals because I need some backing vocals and some songs. And uh, she was really scared and but she was in the studio and you know, it, it works at the end. And it was funny. It's funny 
it's funny how uh, you know this album is about my life, is about my my musical taste through the years, but also to have uh, friends and family uh, uh, working on it and make it and make it more personal. So uh, for me, it's great. And you two are still considered newlyweds. You got married in 2022. How did you How did you first meet? Uh, we met We met in Milan, in Italy. Uh, she was modeling, uh, and I was doing a show uh, that week. And 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 she is a rock fan, so so she went to the show. Um, and uh, you know, we it was like a uh, it was love at the first sight, <laughs> and we started to talk. And then you know, we we ended up meeting and. And and I moved to I moved to Bucharest and uh, I'm living here since three years ago, and suddenly, last summer, the summer before 2021, uh, she came with this. Uh, she came with not the idea, but she came with this. You know, like a law of, we got, to get, <laughs> we need to get married. So okay, so that was it. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. You're mainly known for being the front man of several different bands throughout your career, and you have these two covers albums. And I saw that you're working on an all original solo album, finally. Yeah, because uh, that was the main purpose of doing this. You know, uh, I know it sounds a little bit weird, but it is <laughs> uh, because the Frontiers they were they were telling me the last few years about to make a solo record. And 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 at that moment, I was you know playing with Rainbow, and I was starting to work with, starting to work with uh, Michael Schenker, and I was like, a, I don't I don't think and I don't feel that I need to do a solo record, you know. It's normally for me, in my head, when a singer goes with a solo record, is because you know he's tired of what he's doing, and he wants to do something different, or something like that, you know. And and at that moment, I was pretty cool with what I was doing. And, and I was like, I don't think that I need to do a solo record. So they say, why you don't make a covers album? And then you try if you like it. And if the people like about, you know, your brand and maybe to think about to make a solo record with original songs. And so the, the albums works really well. And uh, uh, while we re we were recording this second one, I was like, okay, let's, let's gonna, you know, write some music and, and, it's great, you know. I, uh, we just uh, delivered the master uh, today, and um, I think um, it's going to be a great record, and the people are going to really like it. And we're going to—they're going to—it's going to be like a—they're uh, going to understand why those two covers albums, and why the third album with the original material sounds like it sounds. Makes sense, and that album probably be sometime next year. No, it's going to be released uh, probably the fall this year, September, October, around that. Yeah. Uh, are you still going with the title Too Many Lies, Too Many Masters? Too Many Lies, Too Many Masters. Perfect. Sunstorm, you released your second album with Sunstorm uh, last year. Yeah. <laughs> Call it last year. It wasn't that long ago, really. Yeah. <laughs> and I saw you finally got to go out and perform uh, Sunstorm songs live. Yeah, that was great. Uh, that was great, and, and and it was very special because you know normally those uh, frontiers projects, uh, studio projects, like the the people they don't have the chance normally to see them live. But it's like uh, the people really want to see live. It happens to me with the Alan Landy album from the beginning. Uh, before to work with with Magnus, one of my favorite uh, projects from Frontiers, and I, I really wish it to, you know, to, to see the guys playing live together, it never happens. Uh, the, the same with the Ferryman, and then suddenly we had the chance to make a show with Sandstorm, so we thought, okay, let's do it, and then we will see how the people react, and uh, then we will see if we can make more shows, why not? You know, it's like a, it's like a good music to play live, it's, uh, and, and so we did it, and the people really liked it, so probably... We're going to keep doing it in, in, the, in the future. Why not? And there'll most likely be a third Sunstorm album from you? Ah, for sure. There will be, yeah. And you also did your first solo show while you were doing your first Sunstorm show, so that must have been pretty exciting as well. Oh, yeah. The end of 2022 was fantastic. It's like I opened my eyes to new possibilities. Like, uh, you know, I was I was a little, a little uh, worried about my career in terms of uh, all the people relate my name with other musicians, you know, like Ronnie is the singer of 
uh, Rainbow, Michael Shaker, Sunstorm, The Ferryman, and also Black, uh, Bandenberg, or whatever. Uh, but nobody says, it's like, a, I really want to go like Dio did after Rainbow and Black Sabbath, that he established his name as a band. And everybody talks about Dio. Nobody talks about the singer of Rainbow, right? Um, so, yeah, I really opened my eyes uh, to make a solo show for the first time. The reaction was great. And, and then we ended up writing the new music for the new album. So I think the end of this year, beginning of 2024, is going to be very, very cool for us. So you mentioned the Ferrymen and you released an album with them in 2022 as well. One more river to cross. Is that a project that's going to continue going forward? Uh, not by the moment, because uh, uh, from the beginning, it was conceived like uh, three albums project. Uh, I think we did. We did uh, great, really great three albums. And, 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 and that's going to be by the moment, maybe in the future, if we decide. I mean, sometimes Frontiers mentioned that it will be great to have another one because apparently uh, is one of the best sales, sellers of, of the record company. But um, by the moment, I think we did enough. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's about to the right time for the three of us to get together again. And maybe we can figure it out if, if we're going to do it again. But by now, I really want to be focused on my, on my solo career besides Sunstorm and, Maybe Michael Schenker, uh, because Rainbow is not happening. So uh, since since uh, three years, so that's that's going to be my goal by the moment. And you've finished up with Lords of Black as well. No, no. The thing is, the thing with Lords of Black is uh, uh, we did two albums, but we didn't we didn't have the chance to tour together. Right. Um, so uh, for me, uh, it's very important on the lifetime of a of a record. You know, to release the album and then to go on tour, as everybody does. Uh, but didn't happen with Lords of Black, so we're getting a little bit, you know, uh, we have this lack of promotion on the records because we don't have the chance to tour. So we, I think we will try to fix that first. And then we will see maybe to start to write new music before uh, to think about to make some shows. But I think the next step for the band will be to go on live first. Uh, but it's not my band, <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> I think somebody else is going to decide that. Um, hopefully, hopefully in the right way. And you are currently touring with Michael Shanker, or you just finished up touring with Michael Shanker? I, I don't know, but uh, obviously, a fantastic guitar player, fantastic musician, great catalog of songs. It must have been. I would imagine there was a little fanboy inside of you when you got this gig and you started playing shows and they're like, I can't believe I'm here with Michael Shanker. Absolutely. Um, and, and also, and also for me, it was very cool the way that, uh, you know, even when I play with Richie Blackmore, you know, with, you know, this big name, Richie Blackmore from rainbow. And I was touring with him, uh, the energy, uh, and the vibe and, and, and the way he plays and, and, and the way he normally uh, behave as a professional musician, uh, Michael is, is another world, you know, is the guy is, 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 he looks like, a, you know, it, it's funny to see how he, uh, he behaved like a teenager. Even today, you know, he really wants to play and he's a perfectionist and we rehearse and every after show we talked about what to do on the next show, if we can improve something or we can try something. And uh, I think he's, he's on this step on his career where he's just enjoying. And, it's, and you know, it's really refreshing even for a young musician uh, to, to, to play with him because it's very encouraging. You know, it's like, uh, you know, this guy is celebrating 50 years of career and he's behaving like a teenager, still like with all, you know, the energy, excitement and everything. So yeah, obviously besides to realize about that I'm playing with Michael Schenker. It's like a, it's, it's about like, you know, like uh, uh, he's, a, he's a, such a character to, 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 to look and to learn about. Uh, it's, a, it's, 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 a, it's a great musician. It's, it's, it's fantastic to play with him. Have you had an opportunity to meet any of the other singers that Schenker had from oh, his yeah. past? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the only one I think I don't, 
meet yet personally is like Gary Barton, but all the rest of the guys. Um, because I joined Michael Schenker uh, Fest on 2019 before the pandemic. Uh, so I was invited to play a song on the tour with the other singers. So I met all the, all the guys in the rehearsal room. I, Doogie White is a good friend of mine since before that. But um, uh, I met the guys. Uh, I met Graham Bonnet in L.A. Um, but then, you know, that tour never happens. And then Michael said, oh, I heard and I was listening on the re on the rehearsal that you can sing songs from so many different musicians and singers you know so well, what about it <laughs> what about if you sing all the songs <laughs> i was like yeah i can do that <laughs> uh, those are all the questions i have for you today uh the new ronnie romero album is raised on heavy radio comes out january 27th on frontiers uh you're doing killer work out there ronnie i don't know how you fit it all in but uh, thanks for coming on <laughs> the podcast and good luck thank you very much my pleasure once again, I want to thank Ronnie Romero for coming on the Rock is George podcast. Be sure to check out his latest album, Raised on Heavy Radio, out January 27th on Frontiers Music. Head over to your favorite music streaming app. Take a listen to the album. If you like what you hear, buy a physical copy. Support the artist. For all things Ronnie Romero, head over to his Facebook page, facebook.com slash Ronnie Romero official. I also want to thank Dustin Hardman of Hardman Promotions and Frontiers Music for making this interview possible. You've been great. I've been George Dion. I'll see you again soon.